again to be like Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr was a wonderful companion. One time Rasulullah said, who amongst you has kind of visited, visited an ill person? Abu Bakr says, I have. Who amongst you has attended dinars of, of, of a person? Abu Bakr says, I have. And so on, Rasulullah continues, every time Abu Bakr says, I have, I have. And this is the nature of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. He doesn't stick to one type. He's across the board. We need to be across the board. So as well as all those things we mentioned earlier, we have an opportunity of helping out in the charity week. Let's do that, inshallah. Just as, in terms of the importance of charity, it's a pillar of Islam. I don't need to say anything else about the importance of charity. The fact that it's a pillar of Islam speaks for itself. The importance of charity at this time. You can't help but turn on the news and the first thing you see is the economic woes of Europe and the Eurozone and all of it. Every time, it's all we're seeing over and over and over again. Why? Because Europe has financial issues and problems. Okay, this is Europe, an advanced set of nations. What about all those poor nations that are suffering in parts of Africa and Middle East and Asia? They don't get the mention now. Before, we used to hear about Somalia. The famine continues. We hardly hear about it at all. So it's all over the world. Just because there are economic woes around us, all around the world, it's more serious. We have the opportunity next week to help our starving and hungry brothers and sisters. We have that opportunity next week. The question is, how are we going to behave? In terms of the reward, we see in a verse in Quran, those who spend their wealth in the cause of Allah and don't follow their gifts or what they give with reminders of their generosity or with injury. Their reward is with their Lord. On them shall be no fear, nor shall they grieve. So on Yom al the day of fear, the day of regret, the day of grief, there will be no fear, inshallah, for those who spend in the path of Allah and then don't show off about it. So try and be amongst those people. But in order to be amongst those people, you have to rely more upon the Qur'an and the Hadith than upon your nafs. It's a complicated point. But you have to rely more on Qur'an and Hadith on your nafs. Because the nafs says, whatever I spend, I'm going to lose. I'm just going to reduce my wealth. This is the nafs, isn't it? This is the logic. The logic says that. Whereas Qur'an says, Surah 34, Ayah 39, and whatever you spend of anything, he will replace it. Allah is saying that. Our Nabi Rasulullah says, No charity ever decreases wealth. So Quran says this, Hadith says this, but the nafs is always whispering something else. This is the fight, this is the eternal fight. From the minute you obtain awareness to the minute you die, it's that constant battle against shaitan. Fight your nafs and understand your point. Second to last point, inshallah, where we see in the Hadith, where we're told, Rasulullah said, a dirham, like a pound for argument's sake, a unit of money that you spend whilst healthy and coveting is better than a hundred dirham or a hundred of the same amount of money he gives away in his will and testament upon his death. So a man's on his deathbed. He knows he can't use the money anymore because he's on his deathbed. Therefore he says, I give this much in charity, I give this much in charity, I give this much in charity. Because he knows anyway it's going to go, isn't it? Whereas, whilst he's young, and whilst he or she needs the money, and they're healthy, and they can spend it upon themselves, at that time, if they spend upon others, that spent in youth and strength, and, on you, and when you want it yourself, is more better than when you have no choice in the matter. So whilst you are, no doubt we are struggling, we have debts, we have university costs, etc., but take part and participate and give whatever you can, maybe Allah will multiply it. It's not all about the quantity, it's about the proportion. So you only have 30 pounds and you give 10, it's a huge proportion compared to the man. He has, you know, a million and he gives away a hundred. It's a proportion. Allah is the watcher, Allah is the all-knowing. So give whatever you are able to do, inshallah. So we conclude the khutbah, my respected brothers in Islam, by one verse in Quran. By no means shall you obtain al-bir, meaning taqwa, piety, getting close to Allah. By no means shall you obtain it until you spend in Allah's cause that which you love. 
and whatever of good you spend, Allah knows it well. Okay. So you're never going to obtain a high rank till you spend out of that which you love. That includes your money, but also, I want to conclude on this point, your time. Every time we come to the charity week, or, there's always a scramble for volunteers. People have got, I have got no time, I have got no time. It's all of the same mantra, the same, okay, maybe you can't give loads, but can't you give your time for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Can't you get involved? That time you're giving is benefiting somebody, is feeding and clothing and quenching the thirst of someone. So can't you give your time for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially in these first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. So leave the khutbah, inshallah, very much wiser than before, seeking different ways of seeking good from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the best of days in this year. Allahumma <laughs> <laughs>